Hi, my name is Christian Jean Duke, and I'm an animation director in the video games industry. And I'm always interested to see how other developers do cool stuff. I'm super excited about the reboot of God of War coming out at the end of this month, and a ton of videos just dropped showing off some of the awesome moves that the new Kratos can do. I'd like to try and deconstruct one particular set of moves that impressed me. Now this process might be something I would do to better understand how another studio tackles a system. Now no one at Sony has asked me to do this. It's more to understand how a system could potentially be put together and some of the choices I believe that Sony Santa Monica may have made and why. It's all speculation, so I'd love to hear your thoughts, but I think you'll find this an interesting exercise all the same. So this six second set of moves packs in a ton of detail, so let's just dive in. So I'd like to start off with the focus on Kratos. The first thing I notice is the new intimate camera, maybe taking a cue from The Last of Us, rather than a more loose third person view. Here it looks like the team have gone with a strafe movement, with it being like a 45 degree run. It basically means that Kratos is always facing forward and the camera is always going to be behind him. So here is where we see the entry into the defense stance. They've been really smart here, instead of creating a ton of transition animations to do this stance, they've basically let the blend do the work you can see here, so let's see. It basically looks like it's about a 3 to 5 frame full body blend, so when you deploy the shield animation, if you look closely you can actually see where this transition happens, if you look for the camera move, it goes from the strafe run, which is right foot forward and it kind of blends to a stop doesn't have any stop animation but that's fine it does the job really really well so then we get the first proper reveal of uh, the shield and the uh, leviathan you see his left arm there's this gauntlet and then when we go forward boom the shield kind of reveals it, like pops out and the shield reveals bam she just goes there and that looks really really cool i've seen in trailers there's like a hook on his back so there's none of this whole kind of magic so this movement stance appears to be kind of slower. You can see there's just a little bit of movement. So after the after the deployment of the shield, you can see it kind of just slowly moves forward just before it transitions to like a quick seven frame camera shift. The animation is longer, so I imagine that this is likely maybe holding down a button. The animation transition appears to be around 10 frames long. It kind of blends to something and then pops back out. You can just quickly see the blend to another system. Also notice that there's this reticle in the middle, so as you pull back the axe it's like a targeting system. Oh look at that, look, he's marked them. So he's basically marking where he wants to hit. You can see, uh, look, that's super smart. I hadn't seen that before. I also believe that this transition is probably 100% interruptible, so if you let go of whatever button it took to pull this out, it would probably just go back to like a normal attack stance. So you can see the start of the actual attack is what? One, two, three, four. So it's basically three or four frames from letting go to release. That when the axe gets thrown, almost immediately in the bottom left hand corner, you get the uh, triangle button which I imagine is to recall the axe, which I love, and I'm totally gonna play like Thor as I'm doing all this. Just like just being able to recall that axe, go, that's gonna be awesome. I'm, I'm gonna spend ages just doing that. Like even just having these recall animations and these um, animations where you pull out a weapon can feel super badass. So just having those feel good and have them feel really nice on a button can go a long way to making combat feel really, really kind of weighty. You can briefly see the transition from the throw animation to like a kind of a closing down, like a run animation. Um, I imagine this part isn't canned, so it allows you to close down enemies of any distance and like charge them. So this is cool. Notice this enemy has a quick two frame pop, pop there, which really sells the impact. This is something I often used to do. Um, like with bullet hits and with attacks, again it just it really sells the impact, especially if you've got like a really nice gnarly um, kind of start pose. If we back up a few frames to frame 97, let's see. So yeah, you can see that reticle and you can see the fact that it's targeted those those legs. So saying to me, you can aim this axe anywhere and use it in like really creative ways. Now if we skip back to frame 123, I think it is where Kratos has aimed, he'd aim for this guy's legs 
managed to trip him up, taking out two guys at the same time. Oh, you know what I just kind of thought? That could also work as an attack. So, so even just you could throw the axe; it doesn't have to hit anything, and then just kind of move out the way and then recall it. Oh man, that's amazing! But this looks like it stuns the enemy. So this is where things seem to get a little bit trickier, and I'm not fully sure how this activates. But you can see again with a smart kind of camera move and a really quick transition from the run to like the start of the attack animation. Yeah, it's like three, four frames with a smooth camera move. It's again hidden the foot sliding. And it, again, it just looks like a simple full body blend, which gives it a lot of weight and a lot of kind of grounding into the world. But I'm not clear on how you activate this. Maybe it's on a trigger, but the chances are this is an intentional attack. So you can see the camera move in and then Kratos jumps up Bam! Grabs the axe, comes down on this guy, big kind of splash effect, and a lot of camera shake on there as well, really selling that impact. The animation here is is almost certainly synced, and I'll tell you why I know that. So you can see that he gets tripped down here, but then just as you see this camera move kind of comes in, the enemy in the back blends from his floor position whoop, up to a kind of a, a standing fall and then ironically falls down again which then puts him in a position for Kratos to just go smash back here you can see it's kind of a semi authored camera the thing that I find really impressive and I'll kind of get onto this later it starts to frame the characters you can see at this point here you've got all three characters framed in the screen really well which then allows the kid to come in the camera then frames the kid and he's he's running so this is probably his, just from his navigation and then it, there's like a hard stop Bonk. i'd say there's about three to five frame blend there as well so i'm thinking that the blends on this in this game are about three to five frames I may be right, I may be wrong, again I'm guessing. But blends to his start position, which in this case is kind of in the middle of the, is in midair. Puts the bow around his neck, yanks him back out the screen. Oh man, that's awesome. I mean, hats off to whoever animated this, but that's a really creative way of using the bow. So that's pretty cool. I also want to point out that I really appreciate this settle animation. It really highlights the weight and power of Kratos, but also shows that he's ready to dive back into another attack. You know, like maybe on the next enemy, you can just see he's ready to attack. Notice how in this version of God of War as well, Kratos keeps facing forward. I'm not totally sure if the camera would swing around for, for hits in multiple directions, but something that is a dead giveaway is the threat arrow. If it's telling you there's something behind you, there is going to be a way that you can do something with that. I'd imagine that you wouldn't get that threat arrow if you couldn't turn an attack. So, uh, there you have it. This process would be something I would do if I was looking to understand how a system as deep as God of War was put together. I have to say the animation and the flow of these moves together is a joy to watch, and the attention to detail really shines through. Breaking this down appears that Sony Santa Monica is really focused on the feel of the attacks. There is a really smart use of blend times and smooth camera moves to cover foot sliding and transitions. Nothing here is super complex, just lots of things done extremely well. So I hope this puts a spotlight on the amount of thought that might go into just 6 simple seconds of gameplay. This has been really fun and eye opening for me as well, and I can't wait to get my hands on it. And if this game feels half as good as it looks, it's going to be amazing. So hit me up in the comments section or on Twitter if you found this informative and let me know your thoughts if you spot anything different or maybe you think I just completely missed something. Anyway, until next time, I'm Christian Jean-Duc and uh, thanks for watching.